Um, okay, so the next part of the presentation here is what should you do? Well, I think the first thing is if you've talked with your career advisors, listen to them. Because the things they talk about are true. Obtaining a job requires networking. You have to network. Um, now, what does networking mean? I mean, networking, it is more than just making sure that you've got a million cards and you're shaking everybody's hand at the conference and stuff like that. It's, it's, networking is an ability to talk about yourself uh, and understand what you want and be very clear about what you want and what you do. It's also an openness. It's a willing to be interested in what other people are doing and find out ideas and opportunities. Uh, and just to be uh, willing to explore other options. So, so what that means is presentation skills, um, before I go to the seat in the interview. Presentation skills, and you probably already know this because you had to prepare for, for, for conferences like this. You need an elevator pitch. You really need to be able to describe what it is you do, what you're interested in, and where you're going with your research. And you need to be able to do it in just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. I have to be honest, is, is when I still see people coming up and it takes them 20 minutes to tell me what they do, I've already lost interest at that point in time. Um, but you probably already experienced this. You need to be able to, to say to everybody what your thesis is about. What's your question? What's your case? Why is this relevant? How are you going to do it? That kind of, you need that kind of type presentation skills. Uh, you do also need to make sure that your CV is put together. This is a bit of a challenge because I think for most of you, you're accustomed to an academic CV, and that's a very particular form where you've got to really list your publications, your academic credentials in a certain way. For other work that you do for, for UN agencies, the private sector, it might be more functional. It's tighter. It should be shorter. And also, you need to t target your CVs for different organizations. Um, you need to have many CVs. In fact, you might need to have a CV every time you do a job application. You may need to have a CV uh, for different networking events that present yourself. And then interview skills are also important too. How can you? Obtaining a job requires patience. Um, when I give this presentation, I sort of, and some people have accused me of saying, you know, like my colleagues who are in the UN system, they say, Dave, you make it sound like anybody can work for the UN. And you do realize it's really, really hard and that we're actually really, really lucky to do this. Uh, and it's true. Um, we are very, very lucky. And in fact, uh, I have to realize that the only way I'm in the UN system is, is as a result of work that I've done over many, many years. So I need to think of that really as a job search, although it was, you know, unconscious, of about three or four years before I got into the system. And you need to think the same way. So what I mean by patience is you need to have a bit of a plan, too, if you decide that, yes, I definitely want to work for UNESCO. I mean, you know, you can say that, okay, I really want to be coming to the Agenda for Education for Sustainable Development. Well, then what's your overall plan? Where does your graduate work fit into that? What's an internship you can do? Which conferences do you go to? Who do you meet? How do you get involved with certain projects and plan down the line? Um, to get to where I am is potentially something that could take you many, many years. I mean, I didn't get there until I was in my late 30s. Uh, it took me some time. Mind you, I didn't finish my graduate degree until I was in my mid-30s, but that's a whole other story. Uh, so you do need to have patience. And you also need to be prepared the idea that there'll be many missed opportunities, that you may interview a lot of different ones. Think for the long term. Have a backup plan. I, uh, I, I've, I've had a number of people who've come to me and they've really gunned on getting a UN career in a certain agency and they haven't really thought beyond then. And you have to have the backup plan. What are your other options? Uh, in some ways, I think where I am is because I just had nothing but backup plans. I'm like, okay, well, uh, I'll get the academic work. Well, I'll get a one-year contract. Oh, well, there's the IT work. Okay, wait, I can go back and work for this human rights NGO. So you j I had a number of different options available to me. But do have some kind of a backup plan that you can think of as that if you don't get the, uh, the, the UN job, how does it, how does it work for you? Thank you.